Hello everyone, welcome to this module and lecture series on objects storage. In the first module, we will introduce OCI object storage and look at some of its capabilities. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure team. So as we have been looking into this uh, slide uh, earlier, uh, we have looked at the local storage, we have looked at the block storage, and in the next lecture series, we'll look at the, the file storage. Um, object storage is the kind of storage architecture where you manage data as objects. This is in contrast to other storage architectures like file storage, where you manage data as a file hierarchy, and block storage, where you manage data as blocks within sectors uh, and uh, tracks in, uh, on, a, on a disk. So that's the main difference between object storage and the other storage architectures. Uh, architectures, And uh, there is, you, you have different classes within object storage. Uh, and one of the classes is archive storage and we'll look into uh, more details on the archive storage as well. So what is object storage? Um, again, as we just saw in the previous slide, let me recap some of the, the key characteristics. Uh, it's internet scale high performance storage platform where you manage uh, data as uh, objects. This is ideal for storing unlimited amount of unstructured data. And there's a huge explosion of unstructured data nowadays, whether it's images, media files, logs, backups, etc. Uh, like I said, data is managed as objects and you use uh, APIs built on standard uh, HTTP verbs like get object when you want to read an object from a bucket put object when you want to write uh, an object to a bucket, etc. This is very different than using uh, an NFS uh, protocol where uh, which you would use with file system where you where you are managing data uh, in a file hierarchy or iSCSI which you would use in a block storage uh, to access data as fixed size blocks uh, on, on the on the disk site. So that's the main difference data man being managed as objects using standard uh, HTTP verbs. Uh, it's object storage is a regional ser service. Uh, and again, unlike the file storage uh, and the block storage, you are not really tying this to compute instances. It's not like you're, um, you know, you mount this disk and you, you use it or you use it as, as a disk to store your data and applications for your compute instances. Uh, there are two different uh, distinct storage classes uh, to need uh, to address the need for Performant frequently accessed hot storage, uh, and there is also less frequently accessed uh, cold storage, which is also called uh, archive storage. So we'll talk about those. Uh, and you can uh, have private access from Oracle Cloud Infrastructure Resources in a VCN using a concept called Service Gateway, which we looked into uh, when we were talking uh, when we were discussing the the VCN module. OCI Object Storage supports advanced features such as cross-region copy, pre-authenticated request lifecycle rules and multi-part upload. And we'll look into each of these in greater details subsequently. So what are some of the scenarios uh, for object storage, right? Content rep repository is, is a big one uh, where you want to store a lot of unstructured data, whether it's images, logs, videos, etc. Uh, we looked into archive backup. Uh, you Object storage seldom is used as a backup uh, location. We uh, saw this in the block volume module. Uh, where for block volumes, if you want to do backup, the backup actually is stored in uh, OCI uh, object storage. Uh, it, object storage can also be used for long-term uh, archival uh, to reduce the cost. Uh, it's, it's a good place to store your log data or, or large data sets, uh, whether you are running any kind of DNA genome data or uh, Internet of Things IoT data sets uh, where you have lots of data you could store that in object storage. And again, you can read through a bunch of these big data scenarios and we have connectors and, and so on and so forth, uh, where uh, object storage is a, is a good uh, uh, candidate for those use cases. Now, what are some of the, the key features of the OCI object storage uh, service? The first one is this concept of strong consistency. Uh, strong consistency means that object storage service always serves the most recent copy of the data when retrieved. So what happens is if you write a data and then you uh, update that data, sometimes if it's you, if your service, uh, there's a concept called eventual consistency. Uh, if your service is based on that uh, and you try to, you, you write a data 
and then you update it subsequently and you try to retrieve it sometimes it will re return the stale data it will return the old copy not the updated copy strong consistency means that it will not return new data unless it has committed it everywhere and as you can imagine these are distributed systems so the data is actually written across multiple ad's if it's a multi ad region in a single ad region still written to multiple storage servers so strong consistency means you are always guaranteed the most recent copy of the data versus eventual consistency where eventually your data might be consistent might be be the latest but you might get stale data in between uh, as far as durability is concerned like i said you know data is stored redundantly across multiple storage server across multiple ad's if it's not multiple ad's single ad data is stored redundantly across four domains in case of four domains we only talk about compute and databases uh, but the storage services some of the storage services also leverage uh, that internally so the data gets stored across multiple uh, uh, multiple fault domains uh, so that even if one of the fault domains goes down the other fault domains are still up and running um, data integrity is actively monitored and corrupt data detected and auto repaired so service takes care of, of that so it's a highly durable uh, service uh, so strong consistency high, high durability and also high performance uh, compute and object storage services are co-located on the same fast network so if your compute instances are, are reaching out to the uh, to object storage uh, we guarantee strong uh, a big you know fat pipeline between them pipe between them so that uh, they they get very fast performance uh, and you you have several features like you can define your own metadata there is server side encryption and we also allow you to bring your own keys uh, if you want to encrypt data using your own keys uh, using your own keys so uh, let's look at uh, some of the the things in in a in a little bit more detail. So first, we said um, data is managed as objects, right? So whether it's logs, videos, whatever, regardless of the content type, you manage all the data as uh, objects. Now each object is composed of object itself and the metadata of the object, which describes what the object is uh, and has some more details, uh, things like identifier, etc. A uh, bucket is a logical container for storing objects. So each storage is stored in a bucket. Namespace is a logical entity that serves as a top level container for all buckets and objects. So objects goes in buckets and then buckets are placed in namespaces. Now each tenancy, when you, when you create a tenancy, your account is provided one unique namespace that is global spanning all compartments and regions so it means you have one namespace which is global but you can have bucket names which can be uh, which can be repeated uh, across tenancies so bucket names must be unique within your own tenancy but can be repeated across tenancies because the real unique identifier here is the namespace now this is different than let's say amazon s3 where your bucket names have to be globally unique uh, in in case of oci bucket names have to be unique within the tenancy because the unique identifier here is the namespace which is similar as as your your tenancy within the namespace uh, buckets and objects exist in flat hierarchy but you can simulate a directory structure using prefixes and and hierarchies and we'll look into this in the next slide so uh, how do you name the objects uh, well uh, the service prepends the object storage namespace string and the bucket name to object names if you see right here this is my namespace which is which comes from my tenancy this is my bucket name and this is my object name right so this is how the 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 service uh, creates the object naming so let's say if you have an object database.dbf looks like a database backup file you if you put that you call put object api and you put this in into into the object storage this is sort of the url you would get and this is how the object would be would be named so you have the namespace here you have the bucket here and then you have the object here right this is the full fully fully qualified domain name or the fully fully qualified string you you if you will uh, which you need right so we talked about that the objects are stored in flat hierarchy now uh, we are used to directory structures where we store data according to you know directory structures and 
multi-directory structures, etc. So how does that happen in, in object storage because it's a flat hierarchy to begin with? So for large number of objects where you might have similar objects, you can use prefixes and hierarchies, right? So what do we mean by that? So if you look at this example here, there is a, a prefix at Marathon and there are there's another prefix which, which says Marathon slash participants. So you actually get with, yeah, with uh, you know, with, with, with two different prefixes here. Now you can use CLI to perform bulk downloads and bulk delete of all objects at a specified level of the hierarchy without affecting objects in levels above or below. So what do I mean by that? So look into this example here. You can download or delete all objects at this level, at the marathon level, without downloading or deleting objects at the marathon participants level. So even though it looks like marathon participants is sort of a children uh, directory structure from marathon, you can still operate if you create prefixes like these. You can operate at them independently, uh, and you can you can have another object here uh, which says start line and finish line and middle line or etc etc right and if you want to operate at all those objects as one you could use the marathon prefix if you want to have participants here you have 100 participants and you have a bunch of those uh, those objects you could operate at them using marathon uh, slash participants prefix right so that's some of the ways you can uh, operate on large number of objects particularly because object storage itself doesn't have any kind of hierarchy it's a flat hierarchy structure so uh, with that let, uh, let's just one complete one more slide and we'll quickly jump into a demo so uh, we talked about the object storage uh, tiers right so what are the tiers which oci object storage supports today so the first tier is the standard storage tier it's also referred to sometimes as the hot tier this is where you store your data and you get fast immediate and frequent access you can retrieve your data instantaneously um, Always serves the most recent copy of data when retrieved. Why? Because we support strong consistency. That is the characteristic uh, or definition of strong uh, consistency. As we said, data retrieval is instantaneous. So you upload it, you download it, it's pretty instantaneous. Uh, standard buckets uh, cannot be changed. So once you create a bucket as standard, uh, you have to keep it at the standard uh, level. So there is another class which is called archive storage. Uh, people also refer to as as the cold storage. Uh, this is for use cases or data where you seldom or rarely access data, but you have to retain them and preserve them for long periods of time. What are the use cases? This might be compliance. This might be your audit logs. Uh, this might just be long term uh, backup and retention, right? You you have lots of data. You just want to uh, to retain them for a specific period of time. There is a minimum retention requirement uh, of 90 days. Uh, if you if you change, if you restore your data before that, uh, I think there is there is there is a cost which you have which you have to incur and you can look in pricing and see what how that works. Uh, one restriction here is you cannot instantly instantaneously retrieve data. Objects need to be restored before you can re download them or retrieve them. Uh, the time to first bytes after archive storage restore request is made is four hours. So you upload the data. Let's say ninety days have passed. You want to get it back you make a request it takes at least four hours before you can download your uh, download the data and uh, like we uh, saw with this with the standard tier uh, once you designate a bucket as uh, archive bucket um, you cannot upgrade to standard storage tier uh, and vice versa right so standard cannot be down downgraded to archive archive cannot be upgraded to uh, standard and right here you can see uh, when you create a bucket uh, you get a choice uh, of either standard tier or archive tier. So uh, thank you for uh, watching this lecture on a quick introduction to the OCI object storage service. In the next uh, module, we will do a quick demo uh, of the service and some of, see some of its uh, key characteristics in action. Thank you.